I've had my fair share of transition filaments and I have always liked to create models with them. They just add that little bit of extra something to make a model pop even more. Now last year Dasmia showcased how to print your own transition filament. Well, yes, you heard that right. 3D print, 3D printing filament. Now her method is absolutely amazing and I highly recommend you check out her instructions on Instructables. In my case, I tried something a bit more simple and made some dual or triple colored printed filament. Hello makers, I'm Joe and today I'm gonna to show you how to 3D print your own multicolor 3D printing filament. So stick around. Now, if you're someone who just wants to try it out, it's relatively easy. Simply download the SDL file in the video description and throw it in your favorite slicer. Now, if you want to know how to make your own filament from scratch, stay tuned. The SDL provided is big enough to fit most Ender 3 size printers. I use Prusa slicer in my case as it makes it very easy to include a transition point for the filament. Once you have your SDL in your slicer, there are a few important things you need to do. Now, the filament itself is in a hexagon shape. Therefore, it has less density than the normal round filament. Ergo, you'll need to up the extrusion multiplier. In my case, an extrusion multiplier of about 1.11 worked perfectly fine, but this may differ on the printer you are using. Next, you'll need to change the top, bottom, and infill types to concentric circles. This way, you'll ensure it's a constant flow extrusion along the path. Finally, once you slice, which may take a while, you simply place the break where you want your filament to be changed. Now you can be as creative as you want here by having one transition or two or even three, possibly more. Now the SDL produces around 11 meters of filament. Not a lot, I know, but enough to print a couple of benches. Now yes, I know some of you have had enough of benches, but with this type of filament, it produced the effect of a two-tone benchy. The reason is that the filament isn't actually mixed inside the hot end. It is simply heated and extruded and therefore half of the nozzle is extruding one color and the other half is extruding the other color. This way the color will change depending on the side of the wall it is being printed. The effect is absolutely awesome. Almost, almost as awesome as subscribing to this channel. And yes, I'm talking to the 70 plus percent of you who are not subscribed and still watching this, of course. Now I've tried several combinations of colors. Some mixed well and created a gorgeous effect Others didn't create high enough contrast for a wow factor, but it was still fun. Now my favorite of course is the tri-colored filament which consisted of filament in vertigo gray, gold happens, and wizard's voodoo. Having these three colors on the strand seemed to have a much more consistent mix, creating a glorious array of mixed colors which turned out absolutely epic. Then there is the Tequila Sunrise Benchy as I have called it. Um, it. This was an absolutely epic success, giving a much more depth of field effect to the model itself, showing kind of like different shades. Now for those of you who want to make a much longer strand because you have a large format 3D printer or a smaller one for that matter, the process is incredibly easy. You'll first need to download Inkscape, which is absolutely free. Once launched, click on the spiral tool on the left hand menu bar, locate the ruler at the top and align mouse cursor with the zero. Next, click on the left mouse button and drag it outwards. The ruler at the top bar will guide you to the length you are creating the spiral. You also have three options at the top, the number of turns you want in the spiral, the divergence, which you should have at around one for uniformity, and an inner radius, which I recommend not to have too tight as you don't want the printed filament to have too much strain as it reaches the end. For everything else, it's just a matter of testing to see what works as you need to leave enough space between each pass to account for the thickness of the filament printed. This can be adjusted by increasing or decreasing the number of turns. Now, something to note is that these measurements will still be off once moved into Fusion 360. So once again, it's all a matter of trial and error. Once you've created your spiral, simply save the model as SVG. Now open Fusion 360 and select Insert SVG. Then you have to choose the top plane and select the file you have just saved in uh, Inkscape. Once it loads up, you can then adjust the size of the SVG to fit your build plate according to the grid shown in Fusion. 
Once done, click OK and then finish the sketch. Next, you want to click on construction and select plane along path. Hover over the inner spiral, left click and then click OK. Next, create a sketch on the new plane and find the center point. Click on create and choose polygon and choose inscribed polygon. Click on the center point and drag outward slightly and use the measurements of 0.875 which is half the width of 1.75 millimeter filament and click finish the sketch. The last step is to select the sweep tool, choose the hexagon as your profile and the spiral itself as your toolpath. Once done, click OK. You now have your filament. You simply have to save the SDL and import it into your slicer. Also, if you know a way how to create a spiral fully in Fusion 360 without the need of Inkscape, please let me know as I couldn't figure it out. And that's how easy it is. Granted, it won't be enough filament to create large objects, but if you make enough, you could always take advantage of your runout filament sensor to stay swapping out the samples. And for those wondering, no, using the palette is not an option due to the inconsistency of the printed filament, which could create a jam in the splice score and possibly ruin it. Now, while the filament printed doesn't have the tolerances that you'd expect from normal um, uh, spooled filament of 0.02% or millimeters, it still produces a fairly decent result and the prints turn out extremely acceptable actually. Printing some souvenirs or trinkets with this method would definitely be a nice addition and it's definitely something a lot of people would appreciate. That is it for me today guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode of my um, experimentation with 3D printed filament. Just a heads up if you've made it this far. At the end of March, Malta will host its first ever Maker Fair. So today I'm going to suggest that you follow Maker Faire Malta on Facebook. I will leave links in the video description. It's going to be absolutely epic for a launch. We're going to have some very special guests, so stay tuned to follow up. Uh, Prusha is going to be there. Uh, E3D is definitely going to come by. And yeah, lots more to come. So make sure you follow um, uh, Maker Faire Malta on Twitter and on Facebook for more updates. That is it from my end, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications, and as always, happy making, guys.